In this video, I will show you how Next.js app router works by creating this simple project. Here, we have this navbar with links to different pages. As you click on them, we seamlessly switch between pages without reloading the website. We are going to create this from absolute scratch and I will be explaining every single step. By the end of this video, you will learn how to create websites with multiple pages using routing and also learn about implementing dynamic routing as well. So. Let's get into it. So to start this project, you can create a empty folder on your desktop and open it inside VS Code. Here I have my empty folder. Let's open a terminal. Gonna use this command to create a new Next.js application. Let's copy this. It is going to ask us a couple of questions. Instead of using my app, I'm just gonna put a dot here. In this way, it is going to create the project right inside this folder rather than creating a new folder named my app. Gonna use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind. We're not gonna use a source folder. And this is the important part. We are going to use app router for routing. So say yes. We can use turbo pack, say no. It's going to take a couple of seconds to set up the project. There is only one more package that we need to install, which is React icons. We are just going to use a single icon, which is a next logo. So inside the terminal, let's say npm i react icons. And this one is installed as well. Let's see the project. Here we have the next project. Let's run this on the browser using npm run dev. Click on this localhost 3000 link. And here is the project. So before we start to create the routing, let's see the structure of this Next.js app and also clean some stuff. We are going to be creating our routes inside this app folder, which is a special folder. Here we have the layout of the website, the root layout, which basically returns a HTML with its body and the children elements. The children elements basically represent everything that you are going to create. We have some predefined CSS over here with Tailwind's utility classes at the top. And page.tsx file is basically what you're seeing in the background right now. We are going to clean this up. Let's delete this entire div. And return a new one that says hello world. We can delete this import image as well. So the way the app router works in Next.js is pretty simple. You don't have to install any external packages or anything. App router is already inside Next.js, which is actually this special folder over here called app. To define a new route, all you need to do is to create a new folder like a about section or a product section and create a page.tsx file inside. Naming the page file page.tsx is not a convention. To make the routing work, you need to name the files page.tsx, otherwise it is not going to work. We're gonna get into that in a second, but first let's create a navbar. I will delete this products folder for now and create a components folder. Inside, we're gonna have this navbar.tsx. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. I will use the RAFCE shortcut from React Snippets extension. Let's delete this div and return a nav. It is going to be fixed at the top with 100%. A flex container with items centered horizontally. I'm gonna put some space around the links. So justify around. Padding on the y axis 5. So padding top and bottom 20 pixels. And px 24. Padding on the left and right 6 RAM. A border bottom with the color gray 700 and we're gonna set the background to black and in Next.js we have this component called link let's import it from next link this is basically a anchor tag you can actually see it when you hover over it it's a react component that extends the html anchor element and it provides some features like prefetching and client side navigation between routes this is the reason why we use link client side routing. Let's define a route using href, which is just going to be a dash. So when you click on this link, it is going to basically lead you to the root page, which is actually this current page you're looking for. If you take a look at this URL, this is how it looks. 
and when we create new routes such as about or products this is how it's going to look let's also add some transition and a cool hover effect just make it a little bit bigger inside this link we're going to have this logo which is going to be a Next.js logo. Let's set the width and height to 16. And under this link, I'm going to have an unordered list for the other group of links. Let's set it to a flex container and put some gap between them. Make the text larger. So just like this one, let's create another link. And these links inside this unordered list is basically going to be for different routes which we haven't created yet, but we are going to create them in a second. So this one is going to have a route about. Let's make the text gray 300. Text white when you hover over it. And transition colors. Inside, we're going to say about. Let's copy and paste this one for the other links as well. This one is going to be education. This one is going to be experience. And the final one is going to be products. So this is it with the navbar, but we are not going to import the navbar inside this root page.tsx file. We are going to import it inside the layout. This children basically represents everything you put inside this root page.tsx file and I want this navbar to stay on top of every other content so I don't have to copy and paste it when I create new pages. So I can just put this navbar at the top. Make sure you import it at the top like this. And now we basically made this navbar persistent across all the pages that we are going to create inside this website. Let's say we have five, six different pages and when we change our route between these pages using the navbar, navbar is basically going to stay in its position. So we don't have to copy and paste this at the top of this page.tsx file every time we create a new one. So this is how it looks. Here is the Next.js logo. When you click on it, it should lead you to the root page which we are currently in. So nothing happens when I click on it. Let's see what happens if we click on the other ones. If you take a look at the URL, dash about comes up, but we haven't created the route for about, so there is no content to be displayed for the other pages as well. So let's create the routes. So this home component is basically the root page, and this is basically going to be one of our routes. So let's delete this text and make this div cover the entire page. Let's make it a flex container and center the items inside. Create another div and put some space between the text we are going to create inside. Set the maximum width to 3x large. We're going to have this h1 that says home page. Let's make it a lot bigger. Font semi bold. And this paragraph with the text gray 400. And let's put some lorem text here. So this is how the root page looks. Next, we are going to create the other pages. So let's close this file and go into the app folder. So this is the first time in this video we are going to create a new route and you're going to be surprised how easy it is. So just like having this page.tsx file inside this app folder as a route, if I want to create a new route named about, we can just create a new folder named about and have a page.tsx file inside. Let's also create a component for that. We are not going to do much designing in this video, so I will just going to copy and paste this home page to my about page and change this to about. So this is basically how we can create a new route. You create the folder and the folder's name becomes the route name. And as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, you need to create a file named page.tsx inside this route. If you change this to about.tsx or any other thing, it is not going to work. This is no convention. This is basically how it works. So if I go into my navbar, here we have the href 
that basically leads us to this dash about route. And if I click on about, it should lead us to the about page. And this is how you create new routes. Let's create the other ones as well. Education. Create a page.tsx. Create the component. And let's copy and paste the div inside. Change this to education. Let's create a new one. Experience. Create the page.tsx and the component. This one is going to be experience. And let's create the final one. Products. Create the page.tsx. Let's say products. So let's see how it works. Right now we are inside the home page which is basically just represented by this dash. And if we switch to about, you can see the route over here, dash about. If I go back to the main page, route disappears. Education, experience and products are the same. So now that we know how to create new routes, there is one more thing I want to show you, which is the dynamic routing. Dynamic routing is useful when you have repetitive pages, such as products pages. Let's say inside this products page, I want to visit a product named a microphone or some other stuff. Does that mean we need to create new pages for every single one of these routes? Of course, that doesn't make any sense. So this is when you use dynamic routing. And the way this works in App Router is also very simple. Inside this products page, we have this simple layout. So without touching this, gonna create a subfolder we can name this file whatever we like but we gotta do it inside brackets this is basically the way to tell next.js that this is going to be a dynamic route otherwise it is not going to be a dynamic route so you have to define the name inside brackets let's say id and just like we did with these other routes we're gonna create a page.tsx file inside this id we can copy the products page here inside the ID. We're going to do some little changes inside this page.tsx file of the ID route. But before we do that, let's understand what we are going to do. So we have the products route. And by creating that ID, we basically created a sub route that can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. And for all of these possible subroutes, we are going to define a simple design that changes dynamically depending on the parameters. Let me show you what that means. So here we have the products folder and the ID subroute. Inside this page.tsx, let's say we want to display the product that we visit. We can do that by displaying the params ID, but first we need to destructure that. Let's say params and define the type as well, which is going to be a string. So this is a way to dynamically display the route inside your page. So now if you imagine this as a products page, let's say I clicked on a computer. If the route changes to a computer, as you can see, we can display that dynamic route inside this page by accessing this param. And this is basically how we can create dynamic routes. And that is it. This is how we can use App Router inside your Next.js project. I hope you guys find it helpful and enjoyed it. Thank you for your time and I will see you in the next video.